Hey guys, even here, and in today's video we got a whole bunch of interesting things to talk about. I was away unfortunately for two days, I was at the Balkan Championships, my girlfriend competed in bikini. Don't worry, I will show you what she looks like. Here is me with her putting the final touches on her before the stage. Yeah, I'm also her coach. She's not that small, I'm just freaking huge. <laughs> just kidding, but yeah, I'm like 270 right now. You can follow her if you want, I think we brought an amazing package to the stage, unfortunately she only took 3rd place, I felt like she deserved to win, but what do I know. And also in case you guys didn't know, I'm doing a lot of coaching over here in Serbia, I'm just too lazy to promote myself in English, but if you guys are looking for a coach who is fully committed and who is also not gonna charge you as much as American coaches, you can DM me and we can work together. Anyways, let's continue, let's start. Rubiel Mosquera got a new coach. And I'm sure most of you are wondering two things. First, who is this guy? And second of all, who was his previous coach? Was it Chris Cormier? No, it wasn't Chris Cormier. Chris Cormier is only in his corner, sort of. They are both sponsored by the same company, so Chris was kind of, and still is, mentoring him. You know, like to make the best career choices, and also I think he was helping him with posing, maybe with training a little bit here and there, but he had a different coach. I'm not sure who the last coach was, but this is the new coach, and who is this guy? Well, as you can see, his name is Francisco Jose, and he has some really good clients. For example, Angel Calderon, who, as you guys know, was third at the 212 Mr. Olympia, and he's now doing the New York Pro he had his bikini champion, he also prepped this bikini girl and she won the Mr. Olympia that year, and also he's coaching uh, William Martin, who also brought an amazing conditioning and fullness and size and everything to the Arnold Classic Brazil, unfortunately his structure is not up to par to place higher, but I think he was fourth, which was also amazing, right after Goodwito, Antonio Burton and of course Rafael Brandau, so this guy is obviously a high level coach, and more importantly he speaks Spanish, is it possible to prep someone if you don't speak their language? Sure, you can find a translator, but it's much, much different. It's much better when you can develop like a, like a connection with a coach who can, you know, get into your personal life. It's much better. It's much different. And why not this guy? I mean, he obviously has great results. So yeah, they paired up. I think this is an awesome collaboration. As you guys know, Rubio is doing Dubai Pro. And I think with his coach, he's probably going to bring something special out of himself. And yeah, we also got a little video of Rubio Mosquera posing with his uh, team member now, William Martins, and William is like a massive, massive dude, and he competed recently, so let's see a comparison, let's see the size of the legs, <laughs> and yeah, I mean, Rubio is making him look like a classy guy, and once again, this guy is literally known for his mass, he's really, really freaky, but Rubio actually makes him look like a classic guy, and the difference would be much bigger if Rubiel was ready for the stage, I mean, look at those freaking, I mean, this guy is just insane, <laughs> just ridiculous, look at the fullness of those freaking quads, what the hell, what the hell, man, this is just looking insane, I mean, I don't know, these are, in my opinion, these are the best legs of all time, you can argue with me that somebody else had better details and so on, overall, with his conditioning and with the size, this is just the most impressive set of legs I ever saw. Look at this madness, man. This is just crazy, crazy stuff. Anyways, soon he's competing against Andrew Jack, the Dubai pro, and I think he's gonna make Andrew Jack look like he doesn't even squat. But whatever you guys think about that comparison, tell me down below and tell me what you think if Rubiel has chances of actually defeating Andrew Jack and winning Dubai pro. Look at this, once again. Insane, insane, just mind-blowing. Wow. Alright, the next thing, the next thing is very, very interesting. If you guys follow my channel, you know that I recently made a video about this, about Goodwito, his current shape, and also about Nick Strength and Power, the biggest bodybuilding outlet in the world right now. Not the biggest YouTube channel, the biggest bodybuilding outlets, because all the bodybuilding outlets are on YouTube, there are no magazines, there is nothing on TV, this is it, and the number one reporter said that he doesn't believe Goodwito could compete at the New York Pro because of the way he looked a couple of days after the Detroit Pro, when he got a little bit watery, which as I explained to you guys, it's very, very normal, he just had some water and some food, and he was so dehydrated for the show that of course, he rebounded a little bit, and it wasn't even that bad, really. 
But as I explained to you guys, it takes like, I don't know, five days of doing cardio and controlling your electrolytes and like going low carbs to get rid of all the water retention and that's all it was, there was no fat, if there was, it was burned down because as you can see, good Vito right now, right now, this is the current update, looks crazy, again. And here he is with his posing coach, practicing posing a little bit, and uh, the one thing I don't like about this pose and a couple of others so good Vito is whatever he's doing with his uh, toes. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing with his feet, but it just looks weird. And a lot of people notice that, and it's drawing attention, so he needs to change that. It's, uh, it sounds so trivial, it sounds so stupid to talk about that, but it's actually real, it it's a thing. And I'm sure you notice that as well. But other than that, really physique-wise, he looks amazing right now, and I hope he does the New York Pro, because the lineup is stacked right now, and it's getting more stacked each day. Literally, every couple of days we have a new entry, and they actually increase the prize money to $30,000. So, I think this, and the opportunity to go against Martin Fitzwater and Tony Burton again, and to stand next to the top 3 Olympian, Nick Walker, I think those things are incentive enough for Goodwit to do the show, to do the New York Pro, and I think he just might do that, because, again, he looks amazing right now, he has like three more weeks left, and I think it's super easy for him to control his conditioning, even if he doesn't, man, if he ate whatever he wanted for the next week, entire week, and then died down again, he would look amazing, if not better, so... I don't know what his strategy is, what his plan is, but is this doable? It's very much doable, and I think he can crack the top three at that show. I think he can beat both Martin and Tonio on any given day. So I think he can push Nick Walker, stand next to him and look amazing. That would be really good for him and his career, in my opinion. And I really, honestly, as a fan, I really hope he does it because it will make this show so much more cool. What do you guys think? Here we got a little physique update of Martin Fitzwater as well, who has committed to the New York Pro, he's doing it. And as far as his conditioning right now, it's great, I mean, it's awesome, it's just as good as uh, Good Vito's, if not better. I think Good Vito was a bit sharper at the Detroit Pro, but I think Martin is gonna try and not just cruise into the New York Pro, I think he's gonna try and improve, you know, get more conditioned and also try to bring up the fullness as well, but I think conditioning is the main thing he needs to improve on, and if he does that, it's gonna be really hard for these guys, for Goodwito and Tony Burton to beat him, but, you know, against uh, Nick Walker, those two guys used to battle back when they were juniors, like, when they were competing in the amateur ranks, but as far as right now, I think Nick went a little bit too far for Martin, but he can hope for a good call-out against Nick, to stand next to him and challenge him in a couple of poses. So, we'll see, but as for right now, he looks amazing as well. Alright, the next news, the next update is really amazing. It's Quinton Araya finally, officially, officially announcing that he is doing the New York Pro. And as the comment here says, the real ones knew this for like three months. And that's true, I mean, it just made so much sense. In my previous video, I told you guys that he's gonna do it. And of course, I was right, I think everybody pretty much knew. It makes so much sense, because he's ready, he's getting ready. Uh, New York Pro is in three weeks, he's gonna be amazing at that show. He's not gonna win it, I mean, I don't think so. Can he challenge Nick Walker? Well, you know, he's definitely a dark horse, he's somebody who can potentially surprise people, because it's been like two years since he competed, and he improved a ton. He definitely got much bigger, much better, he's coached by Matt Jensen, just like Nick Walker, and yeah, I mean, the chances are definitely not in his favor, but, you know, he can definitely push Tonio Martin Goodwito. As far as beating Nick Walker, well, that's not something I'm hoping for. It's not something I can see happening right now, but I think it's very valuable for Quinton to stand next to Nick Walker and see where he's actually at against these very top guys. If he looks fairly good, if he's comparable, then that means he's close to achieving his potential. And you guys know what his potential is. I mean, this guy with his shape, with his structure... He has like the prettiest physique right now, the best aesthetics, him and Samson Dauda. He's a tall guy with super bubbly and round muscles, he is freaking huge and he also has those aesthetics. So yeah, a big big threat to everybody in bodybuilding right now, potentially the next Mr. Olympia.
But he's not winning any Mr. Olympias this year. I think he's like 29, maybe, something like that. He's very, very young. So, I mean, Samson became what he became when he was like 35, 36. So, imagine what Quinton is going to look like in another 6, 7 years if he continues at this pace. But the way he's looking right now, and he also said that he's posting two-week-old photos. So, maybe he's looking even better right now. I think the way he's going to look like this competitive season... And I'm pretty sure the next show he does is gonna be Toronto, bro, because that's where he lives. And he might win that show. Why do I say might? Because Akeem Williams is doing it. And Akeem, you guys saw him in the Arnold Classic and Arnold Classic UK. He was just insane. And also Hassan Mustafa is doing Toronto, bro, but, you know, I'm not expecting too much from him. It is a big if, but if Hassan is conditioned, you know, Quinton is gonna have trouble. But can he win? I think it's a possibility. He looks amazing right now. What do you guys think? Oh, and we also got a physique update from Callum Von Moger, who is obviously very much, fully, completely back. His physique is where it was, where he left, basically, when he stopped doing bodybuilding. And, you know, at that time, he looked like he could be a good pro, a solid pro. I'm not saying, like, a top 10 Olympian, but he won a pro card very easily. And if he kept pushing, if he kept improving his physique, he probably could have been like a pro show winner, and went to the Mr. Olympia, it is a possibility, very much so, and he's back, basically, almost, I think he's very close to what he was at that time, as far as upper body, as far as lower body, I mean, he had some really nasty injuries in his legs, we can't see them right here, but even in these shorts, I think you can see that those legs are not really massive, they're definitely not super big, but, you know, Wesley Wister is not exactly great in the leg department, he's definitely upper body dominant, his legs are definitely better than Callum's, I think, but they are definitely not his strongest body part. And Callum, we can't see his legs, but upper body looks good. I'm expecting legs to look at least decent. I hope he's training them. As far as him competing again, I don't know if he has those kind of aspirations anymore, but I'm really happy to see him back in the gym, to see him uh, looking good and healthy and freaking big again, which is awesome. He's back at it. What do you guys think? Whatever you think, tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more stuff like this, subscribe to the channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.